Hi everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Grenoble Ecole de Management and we're going to be talking about the MSc in Marketing Management. Here with us today, I have the pleasure to welcome the Program Director. She is called Laurie Balbo. How are you, Laurie? I'm fine, thank you. And I also have the pleasure to welcome a student in this program and she is called Namrata. How are you, Namrata? Very well, thank you. And you? Well, I'm very fine. Thank you for asking. Thank you for coming. You're both here to answer my questions, but first, we're going to start with the pitch. So the pitch is a 60 second exercise in which you're going to have to tell us everything that we need to know about your program, Laurie. Are you ready? I am. Well, then it's your turn. A great deal of marketing activities has changed since the dawn of the internet and more recently, the rise of digitalization of business that is even more important in the health crisis we have been facing since March 2020. Today, having a strong in-store or mass media presence is no more a requisite to be a successful brand. The Grenoble Ecole de Management two-year MSc program in marketing management is built to transmit to our students the competencies needed to launch a successful global career in this rapidly changing and demanding environment. With our team of professors that are both international academics and professional experts, and with the participation of leading companies and alumni that are experts in their business, we will help our students to develop their skills across a wide scope of marketing and business-related topics. All right, 60 seconds right on the clock. Perfect. Thank you, Laurie. Well, let's start with the first questions. And it's like pretty easy, but marketing is a big word. And I was wondering, according to Jem, what is marketing? Well, uh, I don't know if it's the definition of Jem, but it's my definition. Uh, Marketing, as you mentioned, is the wide topic. So marketing encompasses a lot of different uh, activities. Maybe the basic definition that I can provide of marketing is that this is a discipline where we have to understand the uh, needs and wants of the customers, both in the B2B and B2C markets. So based on this vision of their needs and wants, we will be able to provide them you know, the, the different kind of offers. So it can be a product, a service. Uh, we can also market places, events, organizations. So we will be able, with this understanding of their needs and wants, to provide the adapted offers that they need. The one that will give them uh, most satisfaction, the, the best satisfaction possible. This is my vision of marketing. All right, you said it was, we said, I said Jem, Jem is Grenoble Ecole de Management, and it French means I love, so I, that's why we, I didn't precise that, but I wanted to make sure that everyone would understand that Jem is the Grenoble Ecole de Management, and maybe it's not like the Jem vision, however, you are the program director, so it is kind of the Jem vision as well. Um, I can see that you have two campuses, one is in Grenoble, one is in Berlin, and I was wondering, do I need to speak German and French in order to apply, and how do I know which one to choose? Okay, so for the first question about uh, the, the French language, of course, this is not something that is mandatory. I mean, an MSc is an international program, so it will be in English. Having the competency of speaking French can be a plus, but not to apply, not to be selected. It can be a plus for you uh, if you want to do different kind of activities in Grenoble City, but this is not mandatory. The second question about the campuses, as you said, we have two campuses, one in Grenoble and one in Berlin. The uh, choice of the student about deciding which campus to join is very, very personal. I mean, if you are a German student, of course, I guess you would like to be in Grenoble campus. If you are a French student, we don't have a lot of French students in the MSc marketing management, but we do have some. So if you are a French student, I'm pretty sure that it would be more interesting for you to be in the Berlin campus just to get this international experience. So it's very personal. It depends on the objectives, on the motivations, well, on a lot of things that are so personal. And, and during the program, like, is it, um, is it managed so that we have to go in one at some point and the other one at, at another point? Or is it just like we can do like fully in, on the Berlin campus or fully on the, the Grenoble campus? 
Well, it's not possible to switch. Right. I mean, if you decide to apply and you are selected in Grenoble campus, you will do the entire first year in Grenoble. If you decide to go to Berlin, you will do the first year in Berlin. But no, no switch or is possible. It's not possible to move from one campus to another. Well, now, Mahata, I'm going to ask you that question. Since it's a, it's a personal choice, like Laurie said, mm -hmm. why did you make the choice to go to the Grenoble campus? Well, it was, it was a very evident and an obvious choice for me because I was more familiar with French in general. And it's always better to speak the local tongue, in my opinion, because there's not only uh, a benefit to get through school, because in school everybody does speak English and the whole course is in English, but preferably in terms of finding future jobs and opportunities, when you do speak French or when you do speak the local language in particular in any country, it's always easier to get a, a future opportunity in terms of corporate offers. So Grenoble was an obvious choice for me because I did speak French and I didn't speak German at all. And uh, Laurie mentioned the international mix of students and how like there was not many French and I guess there was like many international people uh, in this MSc in marketing management. And Namrata, could you tell us about the, the academic background of the students in your classroom? Sure. So we had, we were, we were 20, we were around 25 to 30 of us, in my understanding, and we were over 23 nationalities. So that's what is surprising that on an average, you have only one person from each nationality. So the mix is really, really a lot, which uh, brings in a lot of, you know, a lot of different opinions, a lot of different cultural backgrounds, which absolutely I agree with is a beautiful experience as an international mix. And in terms of academic backgrounds as well, there were so many different people coming from different backgrounds. We had people from language backgrounds, from science backgrounds, uh, from commerce backgrounds as well. So we had people who had done media previously. There were people like myself who were from an engineering background, which had nothing to do with marketing then people from pharmaceutical industry, and then there were people who had done French as a literature language or English as a literature language, and then come into marketing because they had an interest for communications. So everybody had their own reason to choose the MSc in marketing program, but somehow I think they just recognized that it sort of fit their personality to, to do well in the industry of the sort. And the program really does cater to everybody coming from different backgrounds. And, you know, you can always uh, get along with so many different people with so many different cultures and make the best out of it in the one year that you do study at school. So a very wide range of academic background. Laurie, I can see, in the, admi in, I can see the admission process that uh, not anyone will have an interview. And uh, someone was asking, how do I know if my academic background requires an interview? Is it depending on the interview? Is it depending on the, the TOEIC results, on the CVs? How do you determine that? Well, um, so the interview is not mandatory. So once we have um, the applications, we have an admission board in Grenoble Ecole de Management. And based on the admission board, I receive a feedback with all the elements for the applicant. So I have the CV, I have the previous experience, the motivational essays, well, a lot of information. So I examine each uh, application. And if I perceive something, that is uh, not really fitting what I expect, I can ask the interview, and I do, I do ask the interview because it's very, very important for me, but also for the applicant to be sure that if they decide to join Grenoble Ecole de Management and the MSc, they will be completely satisfied. Uh, I have an example in mind. I had an interview a few weeks ago with an applicant from the United States. And this student has, well, a, an excellent academic background. So uh, it was important for me to get this interview with him to be sure that he will be extremely uh, happy in the program. So I was assessing his motivations because he also had previous experience in marketing. So it was important for me to be sure that he won't be dissatisfied with the program. So when you received, and if you received an email saying that I would like to get an interview with you, with you it's not that it's negative. It's just that I want to, uh, yeah, to check some point with you to be sure that you will be happy uh, with us on our campuses. So 
So it's even in their own interest that you're asking for an interview, not only it for is. yours. It's just so that so for both parties' interest. Uh, we're talking about what you look in uh, students' motivations and uh, what skills or qualities uh, are, you, are you evaluating, you look for in your students and how do you assess them in the admission process? So how can a student, I don't know, for example, show his motivations um, towards the MSc in marketing without having this interview first? Well, they have to uh, write three different motivational essays, about 500 words each. So one is about uh, culture. Another is about why uh, it's important to do a career for them in marketing. And the other is about why joining the MSc. So through all the elements that are represented by the applicant in the motivational essay, I'm able to screen if they fit the program or not. For the qualities that uh, I look for, well, it's about agility. Agility is very important. It's also about being aware of uh, the impact that they will have uh, as future uh, marketers on the world. I mean, when I say on the world, I mean on society at large, because doing business, it's important. There is no problem to do business to make money. But it's very, very important to be conscious of the impact that we have on society. And this is quality. This is a quality that is very, very important for me and for Grenoble Ecole de Management. All right. So like social activities and how they're engaged in uh, our like uh, nowadays problems in a way. And Namrata, I know we still haven't like talked about the, the content of the courses, but what makes this MSc uh, in marketing management different from other programs of the same name? It's a bit of a trick question, but I guess as a student, why out of all the MSc that might have had the same name, would you have picked that one? Well, uh, I think my particular reason of choosing the marketing program at GEM in particular was uh, that they don't focus only on marketing subjects. It's very diverse. We have not only studied only marketing, and it's an overall grooming sort of an experience because we have studied accounts, finance, um, you know, project management, and it's a very diverse sort of subjects, which of course have lower credits as compared to the core subjects of marketing that we do have. So it's very diverse where you're, you are studying other subjects and becoming more of a business individual and not only a marketing individual. But at the same time, you have a specialization in marketing where the core subjects of digital advertising, which is the in thing today and which is the way to go going forward for any brand, regardless of industry, with all the digitalization that's happening. There's a very, very good piece where we have almost three subjects which are particularly on digital marketing. So the, the focus in the marketing is very good. But at the same time, we have other subjects, which is general, which helps students, at least me, myself, develop overall as a business individual because I didn't have a business background previously, which, is, which was my reason to choose the program at GEM. All right. Laurie, could you add something? Could you give us your point of view on, on the subject? Yeah, well, I completely agree with Namrata. What is important to me in this program is that it's about marketing management. But uh, as Namrata mentioned, we have core business skills. Uh, so we have a course on corporate finance, accounting, intercultural management, intercultural negotiation also. So it's very, very important for us because working in marketing requires, in my opinion, also an understanding and a 360 degree vision of the company. So it's not possible to do marketing alone in a department of a, a company. Well, you can do this, but you need to be aware of the impact of the marketing activity on the entire business. So that's why we have this focus also on core business skills. We do have uh, courses in marketing, such as strategic marketing and planning, marketing psychology and consumer behavior, and we have a focus on digital marketing. So the title of this MSc, it's not digital marketing, but we do have a focus on, more on digital marketing because today it's important to have this understanding of the activity, everything that relates to digital marketing. So we have a course of uh, digital fundamentals in marketing. We also have digital analytics and content marketing. 
Well, to give you an idea, the courses in digital marketing represent 20, 25% of the content. All right, now we have a, a clearer idea of why it is different from uh, uh, other, another MSC with the same name. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Namrata. And we're going to head to our first break. Let's go to the cliché. So the clichés are about preconceptions that you might have had before applying Namrata or maybe as a teacher, as a program director, Laurie, uh, that comes to your mind whenever I say Grenoble, whenever I say MSc, when I say marketing management, what's the first cliché that comes to your mind? I'm asking you, Namrata. Well, I think the cliche that I particularly had in in um, why, why, you know when I was going to join Gem was I'm just probably going to go to school and see everybody roam around in long French coats with all students being dressed like you know the cliche French people as as we say, but uh, surprisingly not because it's it's not only French students that are there, which which I only realized once I got there of how mixed the culture is and how many nationalities you have. So you have people of all cultures, all races, all colors, everybody wearing different stuff, everybody eating different things. So my cliche was definitely proven wrong. Well, when I go to London, I always expect to see like Harry Potter and or, or people wearing cape before they go to the, their boarding school, but it never happens as well. So I understand what you went through that, uh, that, at that time. Laurie, what sure. would be the, the cliche that comes to your mind? Well, uh, I think that one of the cliche that people have on the city, Grenoble City, when they don't know the city, is that it's a very local city with not an international landscape. So this is a cliche because this is not the case, this is false. If you look at the main companies that we have in the city, we have in the B2B sector, for example, Beckton Dickinson, we have ST Microelectronics, we have Hewlett Packard, Pomagaski. So that's for the B2B part. But on the B2C market, we also have big names. So we have, for instance, Rossignol, we have Tesser, uh, which is a brand of uh, syrup. Uh, on the drinking market. We also have King Jouet. So the city uh, is a major city. You can have a lot of activities related to business in this city. Plus, uh, we have a, an important community uh, of international students, not only international students. We have a lot of students, but within uh, the total amount of students, we have a lot of international students. So the city Grenoble is a scientific city uh, it's more uh, famous for uh, the scientific part, but we do have activities in business and management. And you have, you also have an amazing landscape. I mean, I don't know if you're in Grenoble right now, but yeah. like what we can see behind you is amazing. Yeah, like honestly, something. the city is very beautiful. It's not only about yeah. business. So yeah, I'm sure like there's a, it's another, another good reason. And, uh, and it's not just the cliche is Grenoble is a, a nice city and it's a right one on that matter. Um, well, we're talking about digital marketing uh, and how about like you were, were studying like general marketing and I was wondering if I could um, go in a particular sector, for example, like will this program allow me to work in the luxury sector or is it just for like toward mass market companies, Laurie? Well, of course you can work in uh, the sector that you want. This is one of the assets of a generalist program. I mean, we're not specialized on a specific sector, so you will have the opportunity to apply and to get an internship if you want in all the different sectors. For example, if you are interested, you mentioned luxury. So if you are interested in the luxury market, you can find during the second year an internship in this sector. For example, at Hermès, Louis Vuitton, we also have students with a background at Chanel. And then you will get your uh, kind of specialization in terms of sector. All right. You, you said that uh, marketing is uh, evolving in demanding environment. Uh, Namrata talked about digital marketing. Um, there's something, there's one, one thing you, and I'm going to quote you, you said, marketing is changing and we will equip you. And I was wondering how does Shem make sure the courses will still be relevant within five years time? Well, you mentioned an important point, uh, and we can see the difference between art skills and soft skills. So we equipped 
the we equip the student with both art skills and soft skills. Art skills in marketing about the the principles, the basis of marketing within each different disciplines that we have in marketing. I mean, in digital, in pricing, in uh, customer relationship management, for example. But we also emphasize soft skills because, as you mentioned. The, the skills that uh, will be required to get uh, an employment on the market in 10 years might be different. But we learn uh, throughout uh, the entire life. And what is important is to provide students with the skills that are needed at the time uh, of their graduation to find an employment, but also to help them to have those soft skills that will help them to um, to be adapted and to get adapted to uh, this changing uh, environment and situation. For the content of the course, um, what is in a set, I think, is that we have both academics and professionals. The academic professors in the program will be able to transmit to the student the most recent uh, skills in marketing based on research and for the professional they will be able to provide to them the elements that are from the market so i do think that this equation having both professionals and academics is uh, one of the set of uh, a marketing program and this is the one that we have namrata did you feel that did you learn any soft skills while you were studying i mean i know you haven't finished yet but which soft skills have you learned do you feel like you've you're equipped with that like you've developed new human skills as well for sure 100 percent. i think the the advantage is when you have academic professors for example we had Giovanna, who was the previous uh, program director she taught us a subject called international negotiations and that skill is so important not only as as a marketer but just generally as a person to be in the corporate world there are so many applications in it where one you, as marketers we need marketing budget we need to talk to clients we need to budget out internally but at the same time even generally when you apply for new jobs you need to know how to negotiate for for what you're worth in general that's one secondly i think the 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 next other soft skill subject which was really good was intercultural management where you know you have to be in a multinational multi dialectual environment where you should be like okay if there are 10 people around you and they all speak different languages how do you communicate how do you understand their cultures and you know it's very easy to um, sometimes offend someone by saying something while you might mean something else because everybody comes from different cultures. So it's really accepting different cultures, getting together, getting along to be more in an international environment. So definitely a lot of soft skills which take you a long way forward in added advantage to the basic core business skills which you're taught by default as part of the program itself. Is that what I mean? Uh, is that why you have live business case? Is it like part of the the learning uh, process and how you can develop soft skills as well? I'm asking you, uh, Namrata, again. Sure, of course. So there were there were different projects that we of course did where we were we were never in the same group. The groups were always diverse, and we were always recommended to work with different people in the class. Uh, in addition to that, when we're talking about the life business case, we were in touch. I particularly worked with two different companies uh, on two different business cases. One was a company based out of Paris, which was a human relations company, and we had to come up with a marketing strategic plan for them, while the other one was another company which had like an online presence of a website they were doing e-commerce of the sort and we had to come up with a digital advertising strategy for them so they, these were two different subjects and they were two different you know completely two different industries of companies so when we do live business cases like this we actually have to work with the company so the idea is not really to give a solution which is bookish but it's something which companies can apply and it really gives me pleasure to tell you that I actually received an email two days ago from uh, one of the companies which was based out of Paris, which was the human, human resources company. And they have actually applied the solutions that we provided to them as students of my, of my project. And uh, they've actually thanked us and apparently their sales have actually gone up. 
So which shows that even as part of students, even as part of a course, you can make a difference in the corporate world. And when you actually go and start working in companies, by default, you just, you know, you've already been creating ideas, coming up with strategies, et cetera, as through the course in one year. So when you enter the corporate world, it's not as difficult as to adjust to going from an academic sitting to a very corporate sitting. So it really, really helps. Well, very impressive and it seems that like working, working together plays a main part in the Grenoble uh, uh, teaching process and pedagogy. And I was wondering, Laurie, uh, because I'm sure you've created the, inter the integration week uh, in, that, in that regard. And um, there is a course called uh, Excel Skills Training and Examination. Will I get uh, an official Microsoft Office certificate from those courses? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I don't know because it was done before my arrival at the school. But I don't think, uh, because the official one from Microsoft, I think it's the TOSA. I'm not sure, but I think it's the TOSA. And I don't think that we give the TOSA. We work on that topic maybe for next year. But the certification that the student gets uh, at the beginning of this year, I don't think this is the TOSA. Namrata, I've got a question for you since you are, I mean, you're going to have to face this fine, the, fine, the final steps, uh, which is the final management project. Am I able to pick the topic or are these allocated? I mean, have you picked your topic or did someone tell you which one you're going to pick? And um, will, do, did you have help? Do you have a supervisor to help you to guide you through uh, this stage, through this dissertation? Uh, so to answer your first question, the student has complete freedom of choosing the topic of their choice. We have, we have complete freedom of choosing what project, what topic we want to work on. Uh, there are two ways you can do your FMP. There's either an academic track or a professional track. So if you do an internship as part of your two-year program, then you're part of a professional track. Uh, otherwise, you're part of the academic track, which is completely research-based. Um, I'm currently working in Luxembourg and my FMP is based on my company itself, based on a financial services company. And uh, I had complete freedom of choosing what topic it will be. And I'm working on basically trying to provide solutions as to how what marketing strategies could be most efficient and most effective in a B2B environment like LinkedIn, for example, for service providing companies. Additionally, each student of us, we have provided with a project guide who can guide us through the project throughout the year. And uh, he also, my guide also coordinated with my manager, took feedback from me about the company, took feedback about me from my manager. So there's a three-way communication, which is very transparent and very helpful. And I have help not only from my project guide from school, but also from my manager in the company to, to add academic as well as corporate information towards my FMP to come up with substantial results. It seems that it's a 360 degree approach all the time, approach all the time. It's like wherever you're a student, you can talk to the teachers, you can learn from everyone, uh, which must be like very uh, nourishing uh, as a student and in order to learn the, the, the marketing that you are here to learn. I'm asking as well because we talk about many positive aspects of the master. But Namhata, let's be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything you didn't like about this program? Uh... I know that Laurie think, is watching. I think, <laughs> no, I'm going to be honest. I think uh, th there wasn't something that I didn't like in particular, but I would say something that was challenging for me as I don't come from a business background was uh, subjects which were not marketing because I did an engineering and then I worked in marketing for two years. But I didn't really have a background in accounting or finance or, you know, other other business uh, skills of the sort, which I did find quite challenging. And we have like, I think, five five classes on those and it can be a little overwhelming if you don't come from that particular background but professors are very very helpful there's no issue at all i've gone back like 10 15 times saying you know i don't understand this so you need to explain so they've provided me with worksheets i've tried solving problems going back to them and you know 
understanding the basic crux of it i've also had personal calls with few professors before exams when we had prefer- preparatory leave to clear doubts and to you know understand basic crux of it because i don't come from a finance background and i didn't understand it at the beginning but uh, yeah that that was the only challenging part about it and now i work in a financial company so you see where i've gotten from to where so yeah. it's yeah, a like- plus And like you said it's a very personal uh, a very personal question it just depends on your background and how you you perceive the whole exactly. uh, the whole master so yeah man I guess but you answered perfectly thank you very much I have one last question for you Laurie before we go to the extra time you mentioned a network with top companies to explore new career opportunities could you name some of these companies and how will they help me find a job Well, we have a, a big network, but most of the network is due to the alumni, of course, and it's mm-hmm. the same for all the business school. But we have the chance to have alumni that are very, very engaged with Grenoble Ecole de Management. And uh, they are so engaged that uh, they're likely, and we had like, uh, I think, three since the beginning of the year. Uh, so they do conference. They participate to private conference that we organize for the MSc marketing students. For example, we had one conference with an alumni uh, that is at uh, Pinterest in London. We also had one with another alumni at Zalando Berlin with another that was at Zander in London and we also have events with the local companies that are uh, able and that are willing to share a lot of knowledge with the students so i think that all the events that are conducted under um, the supervision of the career center enable us uh, when i say us i mean the student but also the school to develop this network and to be sure that the student will be able to find an internship and then after a position. Perfectly clear. Thank you very much. It's time for us to head to extra time. So extra time is two minutes in which you're going to have to tell us everything that you want to tell us before we stop, before we close the show, before we stop this interview. Uh, Namrata, I will, st- I will start with you and maybe in order to help you uh, and guide you in what you, you, you could say is how could you convince someone in a minute to join uh, Grenoble Ecole de Management and this MSc in Marketing Management? Well, you're going to be in a place where you have a beautiful overall experience, intercultural uh, and inter, interdialectual. You're going to be in a place which has a beautiful scenery. You're never going to wake up in the morning and be like, why do I have to go to school or why do I have to go to work? The place is so beautiful. You always want to look out your window and get out of home. Uh, people are very, very accepting. It's a very, very student friendly city. There are over seven universities. So it's a very, very young city and you will have absolutely a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, of course, amidst COVID, that's a little hard, but I hope things will be okay one day and it will go back to the way it was when I was in school. And of course, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to lose. And even through COVID, I was able to find an internship and majority of the people were able to find an internship. The school is triple accredited. So so I don't see any downside of not joining GEM, but only a plus side in every way of being a student at GEM. And I'm proud of it. I believe you're the next program director for sure. Laurie, I was wondering, Could, like it's time to wrap up any loose hands. What could you tell us? Is there anything you want to say that hasn't been said? Or do you want to emphasize something? We're listening to you. Okay. Well, I really want to emphasize that we have a specific and amazing pedagogy at GEM. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are in a specific situation today. This is not the situation that we like the most because we like the contact with the student. But even in that situation, you know, as the PD of the program, I received all the evaluation of the courses, the one that the student do. And I was really, really happy to see how well they evaluated the course, even in the context. Uh, that we are suffering from. So I'm sure that in a normal context, it would be even better. We have an amazing pedagogy that makes uh, theory and practice, that makes professional and academics. We have a wide variety of nationality in the program. So I think that we have the perfect, perfect mix Uh, to uh, satisfy the students. So if you want to have fun and to learn marketing, Grenoble is for you. Well, they got the message. We all, it's all duly noted. Thank you, Laurie, for answering my question. Thank you, Namrata, as well, for 
giving such like a, a motivational speech at the, at the very end of it. Uh, I hope you had fun during that interview as much as I had asking you the questions. And for the people watching, I hope to see you soon on Computionnel.